what is going on everyone welcome to episode three of the gallery goodbye gauntlet uh today i am joined by kamikaze kid what is up my dude hey it's good to be here uh super glad you invited me on to come do this series three was uh one of the first series i really think i got a really good footing into vgc for the sword and shield format so i'm really happy to be here <laughs> series three is um really really awesome because uh, so the weekend that Collinsville happened before, you know, the world caught on fire, uh, yeah. it was the end of February, first weekend of like March, that weekend. And it just so coincided with the end of series two into series three. So Saturday and the main event into Sunday was all, uh, series two, but all the side events and stuff for day two was series three. So... Carl, myself, and, you know, the couple people we went with, after not making day two, stayed up all night, breeding teams so we could play Series 3 events. <laughs> and it was it was really, really awesome. Um, of course, this was, like, the the big return of Incineroar. Um, of course, we got the, the other... Um, the other Alolan starters as well. We got the rest of the Kanto starters. Uh, we got Venusaur Blastoise, of course, because Charizard's natively in the game. Uh, this also gave us the Alolan forms of Pokemon that were in the game, as well as, like, accessible... Uh, it gave us, I believe, the rest of the G-Max forms that we were missing. Um, uh, not all of them. Uh, oh, I there know were least, some out like, of... Like, all the Kanto starters that were not Charizard. Yeah, were correct, not. correct. You are correct. And there were a couple others, too. I think, like, uh... I think G-Max Duraludon was not become legal until Series 4, if I recall correctly. It's um, not on I, the I think... list of ones that became legal, so I'm gonna say, it like Duraldon was also <laughs> it like was a, that wasn't weren't legal in series three mattered anyway. Like yeah, it's, it's G Max form was really form. bad. No one ever like, played it. Series one and two was its own thing, and then you had series three and four, which is there. It was kind of like series three was the first really big advancement in the Sword and Shield meta. Yeah, you had like yeah. G Max Lapras, G Max Colossal, uh, Sand was still around. Venusaur came back with Torkoal as its partner. Like, yeah. There was, was there was a lot going on in this format. Um, you know the the big thing about Colossal becoming legal, like uh, it actually I believe was legal in Series Two, just no one played it. Um, yeah, because it wasn't G Max. I, I think it took until like Series Two for people to figure out that it was actually good. Maybe it's like it finally got the G Max form, and then people were like, oh hey, maybe we should try using this as like a meme team, and they're like, oh wait, this is actually good. The <laughs> the other thing that popped up was uh, Pre Marina was now legal, so you had like a premier Aqua Jet user that also was just like a very good Dynamax target on its own, too. So it's just like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's let's throw this together and see what happens. And, yeah, it was yeah. it was very, very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this format's sweet. I'm, I'm very excited for this. Uh, you you actually were correct. Duraludon uh, was not till Series 4, which is absurd. Nice. Uh, the, <laughs> the mods that were, like, given their Gigantamax one for G Series 4 are all garbage. Every single one of them is terrible. <laughs> That's why I said, like, Series 3 and 4 are basically the same meta. They changed, like, nothing except, like, did Cinderace and Rillaboom get their, like, hidden abilities in Series 4? They I got them at the better, very like, series end of Series 4. Relevant. They got them at the <laughs> very end of Series 4. Um, okay, I'll explain it. <laughs> so, Captain and I are actually recording that tonight as well. And oh, nice. uh, he's like, yeah, uh, let's not use those because that's not what I want in Series 4. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like an accurate representation of them because I remember they were not yeah, very yeah. common at that time. <laughs> the, like, Cinderace and Rillaboom were super unpopular. Inteleon was, like, playable. And then they got their hidden abilities and it's just like, yeah, these are, like, the best things you can play. Do that. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, fun fact, it's completely not relevant for this series at all, but I looked up the usage stats on Picolytics around the end of Series 5, and every single uh, starter Pokemon I was in the game at the time, aside from Decidueye, I had at least 1% usage, and Intellion was at, like, 1 point something percent. And, and then there's Decidueye. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Decidueye, who, like, nobody uses. <laughs> yeah, it's, like... Even in, um, like, the RTT Draft League that I'm in, that's, you know, super, super low level, like, I don't think Decidueye, I don't I don't think it's legal this format, because we've, like, cut the power level even more than we normally do, so, like, Dartrix is legal, and someone drafted it this season, and I don't <laughs> nice. think it's gonna be good. 
<laughs> like when we were when we were uh, drafting everything, I was talking to Aaron and Baradan, just like I'm not interested in this. It just doesn't do anything. So I don't yeah. know. It's it's gonna so, be but- very very interesting, but that's that's a format for a different day. Indeed. Yeah. You um so, you ready to get to the games fan or you were saying? Sure, just uh, one quick thing I want to say before. The team I'm using was part of the first major tournament that was like a premier challenge that I entered in the Sword and Shield era. It was for a Discord server I'm no longer a part of. And it was like a 40-something person tournament. I actually came top four in that. Sweet! Uh, I think the team is not good right now, but like looking back, when I actually played the game, it was super fun to play with. This is why I tried to replicate the team as best as I could from that run. I'm very excited. So hopefully it'll at least give a good, at least good give games and I can at least t- beat you one game out of the three. <laughs> I am I'm currently one and one in these. Um, so you are the tiebreaker. Not to not to put extra pressure on you, but <laughs> I'm trying to get an impression by myself. This is an exhibition match as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I just want exactly. to like have fun playing this team one last time. Exactly. That's <laughs> that's literally all this is about. It's just pure fun and like you know, if if I come out on top, whatever, I don't really care. I'm here to like yeah, show off the people in our community and in that form in that uh, tournament, though. So that'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. So <laughs> I I think we're good, man. Let's get to it and, and see how this goes. All right. So this is the team we're bringing. Um, pretty pretty standard like series three stuff. We have our our super slow mode with Dusclops Torkoal. We also have our sun mode of like Torkoal Venusaur. Um, Ensign, Togekiss, and Pochis, like, very good support Pokemon, and, uh, Rotom Heat, no, no, that's, that's next week, uh, what is in our last slot? Oh, Rhyperior! Rhyperior is, uh, very, very powerful Dynamax target holding policy, so, okay, so we do have Titar Excadrill, very powerful of their own right, um, not surprised to see Venusaur here, like, it is very good in this format, Milotic is really interesting, I think if I'm bringing Torkoal, he's likely to bring his, like, sand mode to try to take over the weather, which means Rhyperior kind of looks sick nasty. Um, I think Incineroar plus Dusclops is probably the lead. I don't think there's any way for him to... Maybe Togekiss Dusclops is good with, like, Rhyperior Ensign in the back. I think getting off Intimidates here is really useful into his sand mode and if i don't bring torkoal then venusaur kind of doesn't do anything but like venusaur also kind of just destroys rhyperior if i don't destroy him so maybe i think i want ensign and i think i want like for sure i want rhyperior i know that much i think i want dusclops torkoal rhyperior i think i just want to try to go the slow mode here and i think this makes sense the, the really awkward thing about the sand lead is determining who's going to Dynamax, but, like, the the real play there is just intimidate both of them and don't really care. It's going to be Grimson on Milotic. Okay, so this is going to uh, give Milotic an intimate, like, a uh, competitive boost. But I'm kind of okay with that. I can go for Fake Out into Grimmsnarl to prevent, like, a taunt or something going on. We're going to see Light Clay. We're going to see Lefties. Okay. So this should be pretty safe to get up a... Um... I think I want a Parting Shot, actually, off the Grimmsnarl. And go for Trick Room here. It's gonna T Wave. I mean, like, as long as we don't get parried, we're fine. Muddy Water, that's also fine. And Zen does hold on, which is, like, awesome for us. We do get our parting shot off. This is gonna let us safely bring in Rhyperior. I would really like to know if I'm going to get my, um, my Trick Room off before I make this play, but, like, this is the play I have. Okay, perfect. 
So, like, obviously he's going to set uh, Reflect here, and I'm fine with that. Because I am just going to Max Quake his Milotic to get a boost there, and I'm going to go for a Bulldoze this turn to proc policy. And because of the Paralysis, I'm guaranteed to be slower than, than the uh, Rhyperior here. So, again, as long as we don't get parried we are good to go like obviously he is going to set reflect so like my damage output is going to be less than i would like but at the same time um i'm going to punch him really hard <laughs> that's that's the general oversight here is punch the milotic really hard because it's our biggest threat right now so here is the dynamax from rhyperior I don't think he ever Dynamaxes my Lottic here. Oh! <laughs> oh no! Okay, so this is really bad. Um, because not only is he going to set Reflect, He's also going to get another competitive boost because I'm going for Bulldoze here. So, um, Rhyperior's really, really dead. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I didn't even think about competitive off of Bulldoze. Oh no. I'm gonna need to crit through these screens and I don't even think that's enough. Oh man, Milotic is really good into our team. Not even something I had considered. Alright, we're plus one, but he's plus four. Um, what's the chances we live a, a Max Geyser here? Probably zero? Probably a big old zero percent? I would classify that as 0%. <laughs> <We're so dead. laughs> oh, Max Milotic is definitely the play, and I, I played like a dunce. Okay, um... Definitely gonna need to tighten up in these last two games, because I don't think there's any way we possibly win this one now. Uh, Eruption... Yeah, he played me like a fiddle. Oh. Okay. Um. Could yawn the Milo, but I just I don't think there's any chance we ever win this. So I don't think Incense good. The, if he's going to rely this heavily on Milo, I think bringing Venu is actually good. How much does this do? Honestly, that did damage. We're dead, but that did damage. Bye, Torkoal. You tried, buddy. You, you did your dangdest. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Guys, did you... Did you know Milotic's really good? So we're dead. I'm going to not give him the satisfaction of KOing anything else. <laughs> Roopsies. <laughs> Alright, gotta re gotta reevaluate this one. Um I think Venusaur is actually very good. He has multiple things that are weak to Venusaur. 
And that makes me happy. So let's let's try that again. But this time with effort. Um are we Oh nope. We're bulky Togekiss. Does that do anything here? I really kinda wish we were crit kiss this week so we could just punch through the, the Grimstrong screens. Hmm. Alright, we're making the adjustment. We're going in on Venu. Um I do think Ensign's good here. I don't think Togekiss really does anything. Do I want like late game Dusclops? Like, late game Trick Room could be a route to victory here. I think Dusclops lines up better than everything else because I have Will O Wisp, I have like Pain Split, I can do a lot of things, so I think this makes sense. So let's, um, let's try this again with better, more effort. I'm really hoping we see the Milo on the lead again, because, um, I don't know how we beat it otherwise. It is the same lead. It's going to be Grim Milo. Maybe we make the Milo sad and put it to sleep. And I'm gonna yawn this Grim Snarl too. Let's just make everyone really sleepy. He's gonna go for Para onto Venusaur, I'm assuming. I think this is fine. As long as we hit our sleep powder, we're okay. If light screen goes up. Light screen going up means no T wave this turn, which is good. We missed. No! Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Wah wah! So the question is do you T wave this turn? I kind of want to swap out into Dusclops, anticipating a T-Wave this turn. Could also just be setting Reflect this turn, which I think is fine. No new info gained. Milo is just going to protect, that's also fine. It's gonna be a spirit break into dust clops. Okay, perfect. Take a nap. And then again, I think I'm just going to continue to pressure this Milo. And. Yeah, we'll, we'll double the Milo slot this turn. Torkoal naturally avoids. Accuracy drop on Tusklops is not great. Grimstarl continues to take a nap. We get all of our HP back. Wow, wow. They're going to recover with lefties. Okay. So we're we're in a position. We are in a position. I would I would classify it as that. And then we'll go back into Venu this turn. Like we haven't really done anything this game. But like 
He also hasn't really done anything this game. It's fine. Don't wake up. Okay. So I think this turn I'm going to swap. Actually, I think I'm just going to click Eruption. I want to click Eruption. I think I could just swap here back into Dusclops. And we'll go for an Overgrowth into Milo. This probably doesn't KO, but it is going to uh, do some significant damage into it. And this also lets me reset Sun here shortly as well. I feel like we've gotten into a pretty okay position here. Big Venu. No, uh, no, uh, Vine Lash. It is just going to be Overgrowth, but, I mean, that's extra recovery for our Life Orb ship as well, so I'm pretty okay with that. Grimmsnarl is going to stay asleep for another turn. We are going to get to fire off a pretty decent Overgrowth here. This is Life Orb boosted. But it is behind screens. Really good damage. Milo is guaranteed to sleep this turn. This is one of those instances I wish we had um, ally switch on our on our dust cops here. I kind of want to set trick room. Be T Wave. I'm gonna go for Trick Room this turn. I'm gonna go for the Quake into Milo. Based on the damage we did with Overgrowth, Quake should KO. Milo goes for the Protect, doesn't get it. Grimmsnarl does wake up, goes for T Wave, but that's fine because I'm setting Trick Room. So as long as we connect this turn, we're fine. That's unfortunate. But it's okay, we get we get Trick Room up, and now uh, Venusaur is going to be slower than Milo, thanks to the Para. So, again, kind of okay with this. We have, unfortunately, used our Dynamax, and he still has his, but that's kind of fine. Uh, we'll Pain Split into the Grimmsnarl this turn. And I think I need to go for an Overgrowth into Milo to guarantee the KO. Okay, Milo does wake up, is going to get the Protect off. So it has kind of efficiently stalled out our Trick Room. I mean, our, uh, our Dynamax. Hey, that did damage. Good job, Dustclops. Venu, no! Alright. Well, Venusaur is useless. Uh, I can kind of just stay in here, though. I really want to just fire off a, a Leaf Storm here. And I think I'm going to go for a Will-O-Wisp into the Grimmsnarl slot. Man, that Para has been very good. Will-O-Wisp. And Leaf Storm. And like we still have Sleep Powder Pressure for the end game here. We have a lot going on. Alright, we do connect the Will O Wisp. That's gonna be good in case he does go for like another spear break into my Venusaur. We do connect. This is minus one, but still enough to KO. That's good. So, like, Venusaur is really, really bad right now. Already at minus three. I'm going to take Life Orb Chip as well. And Spirit Break is going to put me down to minus four. So, yeah, Venu is definitely going to need to swap out here. Probably into Ensign. Just to intimidate whatever they have going on here in the back.
Light Screen's also gone, so he may want to reset that this turn. Could be Titar, could be Excadrill, could be both. Showing Will O Wisp means he has to play around that now. It is Titar. Is this our last turn of Trick Room? Or do we have one more? We have two turns. Okay, so he can't effectively stall this out. So we are going to go for Pink Split here. I mean, Will O Wisp. And I'm just going to swap Venu out into Ensign this turn, get the guaranteed Intimidate off here. Not quite sure how we're going to win this endgame, but we're going to annoy some people. Yeah, Titar protects, that's fine. T-Wave into my Dusclops, that's also fine. So I definitely want to get Trick Room up again this game, I think. Possibly. Possibly, maybe. Grass is now gone. Um, I think I'm just going to Will-O-Wisp again. And... I'm going to go for a Taunt into the Grimmsnarl. It's not going to do a lot, but it is going to be annoying. So we've seen Spirit Break, Light Screen, Reflect, and Thunder Wave. So pretty standard Grimmsnarl set. Gonna withdraw the T-Tar, go into Excadrill. Burning that would also be sick. I would be okay with that as well. He's just going to set Reflect. But we miss. Oh no. Things are bad. So I think this is Trick Room plus Swap into Venu. I want to preserve Torkoal as much as I can to try to take away their weather. Gonna withdraw the Grimstar, we're gonna go back into Titar, which is fine. I can burn one, sleep the other. Just going to be a rock slide between Para and Rock Slide Flinch. There's a decent chance we miss. Okay. That's fine. Um, I could swap Dusclops out into. I think this is a play. We're going to go into Torkoal. And we're going to Sleep Powder the... Excadrill. It's the, it's the faster of the two. I think this is good. I don't know. That's the hardest part of this duo. It's like, you never know who's the Dynamax threat. We know it's not Life Orb on Excadrill, so there's a decent chance this is Tyranitar maxing. Because it's policy. And as a result, it's Sash Excadrill. Yep, okay. Could have also swapped into Ensign to uh, like get a free Intimidate onto whatever Dynamax is here. EQ is going to proc Polis. Oh no, we're dead. Got it. EQ to proc policy is very, very bad for us. I also kind of expected Venusaur to try to outspeed this Excadrill. Like, I know I'm parried, but... It is max darkness. Yeah, we're dead. Oh, man. Put on a clinic today. Put on an absolute clinic here. Like, the, the fact that they're now plus one after Intimidate here is really bad for us. Um, I can go for Fake Out plus... I, I just don't have a win condition. My only damaging move is Bulldoze and Snarl, so I don't really see how we win this one. Um, 
this should just be like KO you, make me happy, you're sad now. It's probably darkness into Dust Clops, make it sad. He is very sad. Got it. Alright, alright. Kinda a clinic here in episode three, but you know. Um he definitely played way better than I did. I, I led incorrectly game one, Dynamaxed uh, probably too early game two, and uh, as a result just got absolutely trounced. Man, not even close. Dude, you destroyed me. Holy <laughs> cow. <laughs> I honestly wasn't expecting to play that well. I saw you running trick there, and I was like, oh crap, it's running trick room, I'm so screwed. And dude, like, that was that was my thought, is like, <laughs> if I get trick room up, I feel like I just run a clinic here. And then like, alright, cool, I got it up, turn one, no big deal. Oh, I'm dead, got it, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even said, he's not gonna max Milo, I don't have to worry about that, I'm fine. <laughs> Immediately, I'm, it, like, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, Please tell me that's Grimstarl. I know it's not, but please don't. <laughs> yeah, I I just kind of realized that you know you're 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 probably gonna bulldoze. Yep. And then I that, I, I was also thinking like maybe I could KO up plus two. You probably can't KO me your turn. And like I had into X Tyrantar X in the back, who was not that great yeah. for that matchup. So yep. I'm just like the rest of it's so like yeah, but I'd always go for it. And then it worked out really well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 100% the correct play, because it wasn't until after I locked in, and, like, I saw you Dynamax, I went, I'm bulldozing. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm bold. oh, no. <laughs> like, everything just kind of clicked all at once. <laughs> it went from, all right, we're probably fine, to, I don't think I can possibly ever win this game in a matter of about two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, game two, game two was also like really well played on your end. Um, like obviously the sleep powder miss turn one makes a difference. Honestly, I think I think you got screwed over really hard by luck because not only did you miss that sleep powder, you missed like a pretty big willibus bond. Uh, yeah, that's like, also true. Who didn't miss, but also like you lost two of your three turns to para to fully para paralysis. Yeah, and you know like and, like <laughs> you know that's that's the game yeah. we play. Like you you can't yeah. be upset at <laughs> at RNG all the time, but. Man, it's it's been a while since I've had that terrible RNG. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you probably care about Milo take and don't get screwed over it, you probably have a much better shot of winning that game, but Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> like if I if I connect the sleep powder on turn one, um I think I immediately just Dynamax turn two and like try to KO Milo. And then from yeah. there it's just like cool, whatever. The the other thing is, because Venusaur's faster than Milo, there's a turn that you, like, go for Protect on turn two and wake up. It's just like, all right, well, there's a turn on my Dynamax I've now wasted. You get to, uh, like, Thunder Wave my Venusaur, and it's just like, it, it just continues to go downhill from there, too. So, M Milo yeah. is something I haven't played against in forever, it was just like, yeah, yeah, it's it's just a bulky water type. It's fine. I'll bring my Rilla Boom. <laughs> yeah, Incinera is specifically the reason I have Milo take on the team because yeah. I, outside of like that specific situation where you got like multiple competitive boosts on Milo take, I realistically don't have the damage to win a game without Tarantula Excadrill. Yeah, and Incinera's Intimidate ruins that. Yeah, so I'm like, I, I need to run Milo take here because otherwise I'm not gonna have the damage to win games. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, if I remember correctly, it was pretty commonly paired with the the sand duo, and just like, man, I completely forgot how much of a threat this thing is. Like, it doesn't really seem like it when you first see it, and then it's like, all right, one competitive boost, and like, um, were you, did you have hypnosis in your in your last slot? I did not. I was running protect, recover, icy wind, money. Oh water. God, recover too. <laughs> there, there was no way I ever win that game. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly think that recover might have been a mistake in the long term. I think hypnosis might have been better, but like, I, I recover was decent enough. Just I felt there were a lot of situations where Milo just didn't have the bulk even with recover. So, well, but. that was um, in game one. That was something I again thought about after I locked in. I'm like, 
Oh, Milo gets access to uh to hypnosis. He could just hypnosis my dust col- my my dust cloth and like I don't get trick room up that way either. And like <laughs> just all of these terrible situations running through my head after I had already done them. I'm just like eh, it'll probably be I fine. <laughs> I had to go for the for the thunder wave and just hope. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, that, luckily, uh, I that was the one I broke through the entire game, it felt like. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, the one, I think it was, like, in game two, near the end of it, I think you were trying to reset up for him and Dusclops got paralyzed. Yeah, with the rock you also, you also had the flinch, that too. That was so. intentional. I was like, well, my only hope to not get loose here is to just yep. rock slide and thunder wave and hope he flinches or gets paralyzed. Yep, and I mean, <laughs> it, when it works, it works, man. It and worked. then, <laughs> um, it's been so long since I've seen Excadrill, I'm like, Maybe my paralyzed Venu and Sun will out, out speed and I can just put it to sleep. And then it's like, oh, no, that thing's just, like, absurdly fast. Cool. Got it. We're very dead here. <laughs> it's, it's probably barely faster, too. It's, like, base 88. Is it? For the Venusaur's base 80. Yeah. It's it's very close. That's <laughs> way closer than I ever thought it would be. Yeah. Because, like, there for the longest while, it's just like, yeah, this is the fastest thing. This is what you need to worry about. It yeah, is. No, Holy cow! Uh, okay, actually, was a bit faster. I today yeah, I, I learned. I'm glad you got, got to at least see like one of the two I think really unique techs on the team, which was the earthquake with weakness policy yeah. tech. Yeah. Um, the other one I didn't get to show, which because I didn't bring Venusaur, was I had eject pack on that Venusaur. <laughs> Dude, yes, yes, I love uh, eject pack. Yeah, it was for two situations. First, it was the Incineroar situation where I can, like, send out, let's say, Excadrill, Venusaur. You intimidate uh, both of them, and then Venusaur immediately switches out for Tyranitar to get basically Tyranitar in for free mm-hmm. with no Intimidate on it. And the other one was actually for the Torkoal matchup, where I can leap stone the Torkoal, get a switch out again into Tyranitar, and then I actually have the way to control. Uh, pretty much never worked out in actual practice. Uh, 90% of the time, the item never went off, and 5% of the time it did, it was a detriment. Like, I'm Dynamax, and I get hit with Intimidate, and I'm switched out, so... <laughs> yeah! Um, a jet pack is something I ran in the early series on uh, Hitmontop. So it's just like, alright, I get my Intimidate off. Oh, you Intimidated me? Alright, cool, whatever. <laughs> like, I'll, <laughs> I'll take a free Intimidate on the way back in. Yeah, I can see where it would work. I think the situation I was trying to make it work. I eventually switch over to Life Orb when I went later down the yeah. line. But... Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. this is really awesome, man. I I have really really been enjoying these so so far. It is just yeah. Been... Thank you for giving me the chance to play that team again. It was a lot of fun. It's it's awesome, man. <laughs> I, I'm very very glad to have you on. Um, do you have socials that you want to plug? Anything you want to you plug before we get out of here for the day? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't use them very much, but I might as well plug them. Uh, I'm on Twitter and uh, YouTube as DarkForce213. Uh, my last video is uploaded in February, and I pretty much never tweet, but if you want to check me out, that's where you do it. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so, you're you're on um, Twitch as the same name, right? Yeah, I'm on Twitch as DarkForce213 as well. Probably cool. should have mentioned that. I forgot about that one. <laughs> See, I, I've seen you in you know a couple different chats before. I'm just like, I'm yeah. pretty sure I know who that is, but <laughs> yeah, that's me. Cool. So this has been fun, man. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, yeah, that's going to be yeah, it for today. everyone. Me. Thank you so much for watching as always like comment and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>